Hi, I'm Tim Brooks, and today I'll talk about Instruct Picks to Picks, learning to follow image editing instructions. In this work, we present an AI image editor that follows instructions and can be interacted with in a conversational setting. Here are many examples of edits performed by our model given only an instruction for what to change. Our approach is to leverage large pre-trained models to generate supervised training data, and to then use that generated data to train a diffusion model to directly edit images. Our data generation procedure has two parts. The first generates instructions and edited image captions using a large language model. The second part turns pairs of image captions into pairs of images using a text-to-image model. We generate 450,000 examples of instructions paired with before and after images. While our model's trained on generated data, it generalizes to edit real images. Here are some more results of edits performed by our model. Thank you, and check out our website for more info. Now I'm going to dive back into some details of our method and talk through more results. The inputs and outputs of this text messaging animation are actual inputs and outputs of our model. Now, a couple years ago, this may have seemed far-fetched, but recently, there have been a lot of cool papers that can modify and create new images from text. One work is DreamBooth, which learns to represent subjects and concepts by fine-tuning on a collection of images. For example, it can fine-tune on many images of someone's pet, and then generate new images of the pet in different contexts, given a new description of the final output image. Another work is Imagic, which uses a different fine-tuning scheme and is designed to edit a single image. One thing worth noting about this method, as well as DreamBooth, is that since they fine-tune the entire model, it can be very time-consuming to run. The last related work I'll talk about today is Prompt to Prompt. This model solves a slightly different problem. It takes in two similar descriptions as input, and generates two similar images as output. These works all have really cool results, but jumping back to our motivation of a conversational use case, none of the related works address our focus of following image editing instructions. Let me now enumerate more specifically our goals. We want to edit real input images, not generated images. We want to tell the model exactly what edit to make as a written instruction. We don't want our model to require any extra input, such as full descriptions of the images, extra image examples, or drawn masks by a user. And we want our model to perform the edit in the forward pass without the need for inversion or fine tuning so that it's fast. Our approach is to train a large diffusion model to directly edit images and to train it on a large supervised dataset of paired images and instructions. But it begs the question, where does this supervised dataset come from? Our key insight is to combine knowledge of large pre-trained models to generate training data. And this is where we leverage GPT-3. Now this project was back before ChatGPT, so the demo that I have is using GPT-3 in the OpenAI Playground, and we use it to edit image captions. GPT-3 is extraordinary at predicting what comes next. So in the last example, I provide an input caption, landscape photograph of lake with mirror-like reflection and summer green trees, and then edit, change the season to autumn. And GPT-3 produces an edited output caption. We can take this one step further and have GPT-3 generate a plausible edit as well. This time I just give it the input caption, a young man with brown hair wearing a green backpack. And GPT-3 generates a plausible edit, give him a blue backpack, as well as an edited output caption. We use this idea to create training data. We fine tune GPT-3 on 700 human written edits, which makes it even better at this task. Then we provide 450,000 input captions from the Lion dataset and have GPT-3 generate an edit instruction as well as an edited caption for each one. We use stable diffusion to turn our pairs of captions into images, and we leverage prompt to prompt to make sure that the pairs of images look similar to each other. So here is our entire pipeline for generating training data. We take in an input caption, a photograph of a girl riding a horse. We pass that through our fine-tuned version of GPT-3, and it generates an instruction, have her ride a dragon, as well as an edited caption, photograph of a girl riding a dragon. Now we have a pair of captions, and we pass them through stable diffusion with prompt to prompt to generate a pair of images. This constitutes one example and we run it 450,000 times to create a large data set with pairs of images and edit instructions. It's worth mentioning that the generated data is actually very noisy. There are many examples where the captions are bad or where stable diffusion or prompt to prompt fail. We use clip to filter the data set, which helps a bit, but the important thing is that our data set is very large and that it works often enough that there is signal to learn from. Now that we have this large data set specifically for our task, 
It is simplified to a supervised learning problem. We train a diffusion model to directly do image editing by fine-tuning stable diffusion on our generated data. And the cool thing is that despite being trained on generated instructions and generated images, it generalizes to edit real images like turning the scene in this painting into a grocery store. Classifier-free guidance can improve samples from conditional diffusion models. Our model has two conditional inputs, an instruction and an image, and we find that it works well to apply classifier-free guidance on both of them, but that it's important to use a much larger scale for text guidance than image guidance. To get the best results, guidance scales should be tuned for each example, which we do for results shown in these slides. We ran some ablation experiments to quantify how important data scale and quality are for our results. Here we measure two metrics. The y-axis measures similarity between the input and output images, and the x-axis measures how well the change between the images matches the change in text. We are looking for the best trade-off, where higher is better, over a range of classifier-free guidance scales. Removing clip filtering worsens performance, and using smaller data sets worsens performance and limits the ability to perform more substantial edits. We also compare these metrics with two baselines, SDEdit and Prompt-to-Prompt -prompt with DDIM inversion, and find our model performs much better. Visual comparisons with these baselines as well as text-to-live also show that our method produces better edits. A nice property of our model is that we can sample many diverse outputs given the same image and instruction by varying the latent noise. Another property of our model is that it's fast. This is because it operates in the forward pass and doesn't require fine-tuning on each new input like some of the related works. This enables interactive and iterative editing our model has biases, which it inherits from the training data and models that it's based on. Here our model shows bias correlating profession and gender. Our model also has a number of failure cases, primarily that it cannot change the viewpoint, layout, or spatial structure of an image. These limitations also exist in stable diffusion and prompt-to-prompt, -prompt, and improving the models and techniques used for generating training data could also improve our model. We've open-sourced weights for our model, our generated dataset, and code for generating images and training new models. Here are a few of the fun applications for image editing that people have built on top of our model. Lastly, I'd like to share two main takeaways from this work. The first is that, similar to how large language models have benefited from instruction fine-tuning, image generation models can be made more useful by teaching them to follow instructions. An important direction for further improving the usefulness of image generation models is to explore other post-training methods such as reinforcement learning from human feedback. The second is that we can use large pre-trained models, including models trained on different modalities, to generate training data for new tasks. Our results for image editing suggest this is worthwhile to explore in other contexts. Thanks for watching.